All right, I have a quick question for you. How many of you would love to meet somebody like, like Elon Musk? Maybe Oprah Winfrey, Tom Brady? Raise your hand. I show you. All right, now keep your hand up if you actually believe that that is possible in the next 12 months, that you could actually meet that person. All right, most of the hands went down. What I'm going to show you today and share with you today is how you are only two people removed from meeting anybody that you want that could actually change the direction of your life. So who's ready to disrupt the way you've learned about how to connect with people? Yes. yes, all right. Now, how many of you are familiar with this saying? Six degrees of separation, right? All right, and it's been uh, around for a long time, and maybe a lot longer than probably you realize. The history of it comes from this, and it actually started in 1930. A Hungarian writer wrote a short play called, called Chains. His name was Frigus Carinthi, and he actually talked about how everybody in the world was connected through six degrees of separation or less. Now, back in then, in 1967, Stanley Milgram actually did an experiment. He called it the small world experiment. We actually tried to prove this. And then through the years, we've had, in 1989, a Broadway play of the same name, 1993, Will Smith did a movie called Six Degrees of Separation. And then in 2011, there was a study done. It was called The Anatomy of Facebook, done in conjunction with the University of Milan and Cornell University, in which they studied all 721 million Facebook users, 69 billion friendship links and connections. And what they discovered is that the degree of separation now between any, any people on the planet had gone down now to 4.74. Now moving along to 2016, they did another study of Facebook between their 1.2 billion users now, which was 22% of the world's population. And guess what? It shrunk even further down to 3.57. Now here we are in 2022, and I believe it's down to two people. Why? Because social media has allowed global interconnecting to let you meet, find out, get to know, uh, approach anybody. We have sites like LinkedIn and Facebook and Instagram, and people are snapping and chatting and talking and whatever they're doing. That didn't exist back in the 1930s, right? And so social media has made it so easy for us now to connect with people. Now, I'm gonna share with you seven steps that you actually can now can use to connect to that one person that you want to meet that will actually change your life. Now, this works for anybody. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter where you're from. It doesn't matter your education, your background, where you live. It works for everyone. And it doesn't matter either who you wanna connect with. Celebrities, industry leaders, millionaires, bil yes, billionaires. It doesn't matter. It works for all people. Now, just a brief side note here, a real quick story about where I grew up. Because I know if I can do what I've been able to accomplish, then I know any of you can. I grew up in Flint, Michigan. For those of you who are familiar or not familiar with Flint, Michigan, it was an auto town. It was booming in the 1960s and 70s until it was decimated. Why? Because General Motors failed to connect to their customers. And it was, it was destroyed. My father spent 40 years on the assembly line. I grew up in a broken home with broken dreams. I pretty much was fired from every single job I had. I had a lot of ups and downs. One of the lowest downs, I was broke. I had to borrow money. My ex-wife and I actually rented a U-Haul and lived in a motel for almost two months. And so you can see at this point in my life, I'm probably the furthest person away from connecting to anyone. I couldn't even connect to the phone. And so <laughs> I definitely wasn't destined to meet the who's who of any industry at this point in my life. Now, let's fast forward a couple decades, and this is who I've been able to meet, and this is my network. I've been able to partner with and create relationships and friendships and connections with some of the, the most amazing people on the world. I've been able to dine with royal families, to meet prime ministers, share an office with a shark for two years, uh, meet millionaires, billionaires, yes, billionaires. It's uh, me there with the owners of one of the football clubs in England. Partner with musicians who've sold over 50 million records. I put together a deal where I was a part owner of a sports, a cricket franchise for all, all things for a year, which was really exciting. I produced two Hollywood films and most exciting and most important, I've been able to bring the gift of hearing to thousands of people in the Caribbean with a, a charity I work with called Starkey Hearing Foundation. I've been able to meet the, the who's who of the self-improvement and sales industry. And I have an amazing fiance and two beautiful children, uh, Michele and Jana. Now, I can hear some of you say, well, that's great job. Maybe you just got lucky. 
I don't believe in luck. Luck is a word other people use to try to explain things that they don't understand. I discovered, and I'm going to share with you, an actual systematic designed approach that you can use to connect to anybody in the world. Now, it's going to require one thing. It's going to require me to share a single word with you. And that single word, when it's properly understood, will have more impact in your life than any other word in it, the dictionary. Now, when I say the word, it's going to scare some of you. It's going to cause you a little bit of anxiety. Some people even get physically ill it's because it's been misunderstood. And so I know now all you're sitting there thinking, oh, God, what is this word he's going to give, right? The word is actually networking. That's, uh, and you see, but it's because you've been taught it the wrong way. Let's go back to Webster. Look at the definition of what networking really is. Networking is simply interacting and connecting with other people to exchange information. It's what we're doing here all day today. Two, develop contacts. I know some of you are, are meeting people here that you didn't know before. and Maybe I'm sure some of you will end up doing business together. But to develop what? contacts and to further one's career. Now, I believe everyone else can argue about the before and after. But while we're here, I believe we're here to help each other, to connect with each other, to build relationships, to push each other, to support each other, to love each other, and encourage each other to create, not to compete. And so when you understand what this word really means, you can then start to realize that you can connect to anybody by following these next seven steps I'm going to share with you. Now, what are these seven steps that will allow you to connect to anyone? They will allow, they've allowed me to connect to those people that I have in my network. The first step is decision. You have to decide who is it you want to meet. So I encourage all of you, make a list, the top 10, top 20 people. It doesn't matter who they are. I don't care who they are, celebrity, wealth, it does not matter. Make a list of those 10 people that you would love to connect with. That by meeting them and connecting with them and partnering with them, it's going to change the trajectory of your life. Now, the other thing you want to do is you want to ask yourself why. Why do you want to connect? Is it just to get the photo op and, and share it on social media? Is that going to make a difference in your life? For everyone here, I don't think so. I think you want something more. I think you have an idea, a dream, a vision that maybe with that right one connection could help bring it out to the world, impact and change other people's lives. So make sure you're very clear about why you want to connect with that person. And as I said, make a list. Start tonight after we're done. Ten people. Second step is research. And this is where you're going to have to spend some time. You are going to need to find out everything that is important to the people that you want to connect with. And social media, again, has made this so easy. We have Facebook, LinkedIn, all these sites, Google. So you want to start to get to know this person. What do they like? What don't they like? Where are they from? What was their upbringing like? Where'd they go to college? Where'd they go to school? Do they like certain kind of books? Do they like personal development? What kind of work history do they have? Where do they used to work? Do they volunteer for any charitable organizations or any civic groups? Do they donate money to a charity? Do they like sports? What, what do they like? Start to find out about the person and really get an understanding of what makes them tick, what gets them moving, what's important to them. Now, as you gather your information, you have now decided who you want to meet. You have the information. You've done your research. Step three is the gatekeeper, right? You've all heard about this. I believe call it great gatekeepers. And this is the inner circle. I refer to this as that one person removed, right? That's that inner circle of people. Maybe it's the agent, business manager, PR person, lawyer, executive assistant, right? Secretary, um, high school friends. Maybe they grew up with people that they work with. But it's that one group of people whose job it is to keep you out and keep you away. But you want to do your research and figure it out. Who is that one person? And then what do you want to do? You want to go a step further. You want to move out now another to the second person removed, which I call the outer circle. Now, who is that? You just kind of start to reverse engineer. And this requires you to do more research. You know, LinkedIn used to make this so easy for it. I don't know why they took it away. But they would actually tell you the person. They would actually tell you the person. Steve, you know Dave, who knows Jane, who actually is connected to the person you want to meet. And they actually used to have a, a graph, but they've since removed it. So it's just going to require you to do a little bit of extra work. So you can kind of reverse engineer now. Now you have a full understanding who is important, who's on the inside, who is on the, what we'll call the outside 
of that person. Step number four, this has done the most amazing things for me, and it has caused me to have all of those relationships you saw on the previous slide. It is something I call little things for big connections. Little things. This is not about making a transaction. This is about a relationship. And so what, is, what are some of the little things you can do? Well, I've used these to create some of the most amazing partnerships, relationships, friendships. I've had clients that were in the hospital who are, are popcorn addicts. How did I know that? Done my research. Went to University of Michigan, sent them the popcorn. I've had other clients who are superhero, you know, Marvel fans. I've sent them figurines just to try to get in the door. And then three, I've had another client. He loved yo-yos. I went on Google, found somebody who actually made hand-carved wooden yo-yos, found one of his most famous quotes that he had uh, been responsible for and actually had that put on the yo-yo. I'll share with you three quick examples of my favorite ones, right? I wanted to meet a digital marketer, somebody who was at the top of his field. Now, if you're going to make a list, you might as well go right to the top, right? Make sure you connect to the top. I had done my research. What was important to him? There was one person in his life that had the most impact in his life, and that was his father. His dad was a huge cricket fan. Now, through some of my other connections, I was friends with one of the greatest players of all time, and I asked him to please autograph a bat to his father. That has led to an amazing friendship, partnership, and relationship that, that you, you can't put a price on. But it all started with that. Second thing is I wanted to get closer to a billionaire. Yes, a billionaire, the same one that owned that football club in England. Now, whenever I'd go and meet them through that inner circle, I'd always notice that we always ended up in the most exclusive department store in the world, going immediately to the basement where they had a Krispy Kreme donut stand. Why? Because they didn't have Krispy Kreme back then in, in his country. And so the next time I went all the way overseas, 18 hours, I went down to my local market, grabbed my donuts, made it all the way to India. They were destroyed. But I knew it meant something to him. Why? Because people, most of these people that you want to connect with always have people who want something from them. Very few, if any, are doing things for them. And so you want to start to dream again. You want to start to use your imagination. You want to start to think, how can I be unique? How can I be different than anyone else? And then this is my favorite one. I realized that I, I love personal development. I always love to be learning. I wanted to meet, for me, the, the greatest teacher on human success and potential in the last 60 years. Bob Proctor, maybe some of you know him from the movie The Secret. I went to his event. I sat in the last row, and I sat there and listened for two and a half days to him talk about, if I just shift some paradigms, my results will shift. I said, okay. But I made a decision that I wanted to be personally mentored by him. I wanted to be in his inner circle, and I wanted to develop some kind of relationship or partnership with him, but I had no idea how. Don't worry about the how, but I wrote it down. And for two and a half days, I sat there and listened to this man play one single song. Every morning, every break, every return from break, lunch, bathroom break, it didn't matter. But this song was, I can see clearly now. It's going to be a bright, bright sunshine. Don't worry, I'm not going to start. It's, uh, <laughs> it's going to be a bright, bright, sunshiny day. So obviously, I knew that meant something to him. Now, he had reached the top of his industry, had all the accolades and fame that he could ever want, had all the money that he needed. So what could I do? I started to think again. How can I be a little bit different? I wonder if the guy that even sings that song is still alive. So after that event, I went to Google, seems where all of us go, and I discovered that it was Johnny Nash, and that yes, he was indeed very, very much alive. Any contact information? Zero. He had become a recluse, had been seen in public in 30 years, no website, nothing. But I kept digging, I kept looking, until I found a phone number on some documents, called up and it was his wife. I said, ma'am, Bob Proctor is a huge fan of your husband. If I sent you something for his 80th birthday, would you get your husband to sign it, please? Spent my $5 online, bought my used record, shipped it. Now you want to make it. When you do get your in, make sure you make it as easy as possible. I sent the postage, the return packaging. I sent the marker. I even sent the tape. And she never got it. So I had to do the whole thing twice. <laughs> but I got it back. And then I put a small plaque inside of, I framed it. I put a small plaque inside that. Keep in mind, Bob Proctor doesn't know who I am. But I put a plaque inside there and said, thank you for helping me see clearly now, John Tellerico. And I framed that and left it at his next event. And guess what? I sprinted to the parking lot because I was so scared and I left. <laughs> Hit the terror barrier and left. 
Within an hour, somebody hunted me down through some mutual friends, right? And, and he asked me to come back. And now I am proud to say that that framed picture hangs on the wall in his home in Toronto. Unfortunately, Bob is, has left us about three weeks ago. But um, that gesture led to an amazing friendship, uh, mentorship, and partnership, and someone who will always be very dear to my heart. That's what's possible when you start to think about other things for other people. <laughs> Step number five, thank you. I believe you want to take a three-pronged approach, the plan. Go three different directions. Go direct. Sometimes it's as simple as just asking. Go direct to the person. Second approach is right through that one person removed, the gatekeepers. But you've done your research now, so you know how to approach them. And then the third one, obviously, is the second person removed. But you always want to remember you want to be offering value, leaving people with the impression of increase, and asking yourself, how can I add something to their life that other people wouldn't think of because they're always wanting something from them. The sixth step is persistence. I believe that this is best explained by understanding attitude. What is attitude? Attitude is a composite of your thoughts, your feelings, and your actions. Go through the day thinking that you are unstoppable, undeniable, unlimited in who you are and who you can connect with. Take on the feeling that you are grateful for everything in your life. Appreciate each day. Appreciate the relationships that you do have. And then action, follow up, stay in the mix. Make sure you let you are staying in tune with what is going on in their life. Maybe there's an event they're speaking at, maybe there's something that they're releasing, something that they're doing, persist. Step seven, now that you actually have gone and established a relationship, you wanna maintain that relationship, maintain that friendship. You do that through little things, remembering birthdays, remembering important dates. But all of this goes back to making a decision, doing your research, using your imagination, figuring out what is that little thing for a big connection that you want to make, and then taking action. So I'll leave you all with this one question. Who is that one person that you're going to connect with in the next 12 months that's going to change the direction of your life? Thank you.